Welcome to Bowling Showcase, the only show to bring you everything bowling in the bowling capital of the world, Metro Detroit. I'm your host, Mark Martin. So we've made it past the holidays, and I hope everyone had a great one. In today's show, we'll cover the McKay Charity Tournament, the second and the third Women's and Men's Series events, a peek around Thunder Bowl, and of course, our TurboTech Driven to Bowl segment. Thanks once again to Thunderbolt for hosting all of our magazine shows this entire season. I hope you're enjoying the Adult Challenge. Now we're just getting started in this action-packed series, which will wrap up in May. So let's look in at the McKay Charity Event from Sterling Lanes in Sterling Heights, right here on Bowling Showcase. Sixty bowlers making up 30 doubles teams competed at Sterling Lanes and Sterling Heights for the 29th annual Tom McKay Tournament. This charity event raises funds for two worthy causes, the International Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum and the Carmanos Cancer Institute. Over the past 28 years, this event has helped raise over $300,000 and bring awareness through raffles, silent auctions, and of course, bowling. This tournament is open to any invited bowler and offers the unique chance to pair up bowlers of varying skill levels. Much like a Pro-Am event, each team is paired according to the individual average with the highest average paired with the lowest. Some bowl for fun, others for competition, but all bowl for a cause they believe in. After three games of qualifying, the top eight teams go head-to-head -head in single-game elimination matches until at the end of the day, a winning team is determined. On this day, it was the winning team of Tim McKay and Steve Shirley who beat out Larry Kinsman and Joel Sand in the final match to claim the top prize. Even with the competitive nature of the matches, the bowlers never lost sight of the big picture. After the long day of matches, all bowlers gathered for a festive banquet where additional money was raised with a silent auction. And the awarding of bowling balls to the top eight teams. The McKay tournament raised over $11,000 with a day full of bowling, laughs, good cheer, and charity. Proving once again why Metro Detroit is the bowling capital of the world. So what fun that was, and to do it for such worthy causes, what can be better? If you want to join us next year, just drop me an email. Our second Women's and Men's Series event was held back in December, and we're bringing it to you next from Westland Bowl on Bowling Showcase. The second Men's and Women's Series event of the season was held on December 8th at Westland Bowl in Westland. This is the second of five men's and women's series events for the bowling season and open to any USBC member. The men's and women's series events, though separate, mirror each other with women on one end of the house and the men on the other. It was a great turnout for this event with 36 women and 50 men competing in their respective tournaments. On the men's side, Jordan Horns of Detroit was the top qualifier with a four game total of 968 on games of 257, 201, 244, and 266. Justin Knowles of Okemos, no stranger to fans of Bowling Showcase, qualified sixth in the field with a total of 859. In match play, he was unstoppable, first beating Darren Alexander of Essex, Ontario, 239 to 193. He then beat Aaron Lorenz of Centerline, 213 to 186. And then narrowly defeated Anthony Wright of Detroit, 198 to 193, to advance to the championship match. Chris Sepaniak of Wyandotte qualified ninth with 845. In match play, he defeated Leonard Jackson of Sterling Heights. 234 to 205. Then top qualifier Jordan Horns, 225 to 206. And finally, Mark Brooks of Westland, 196 to 176, on his ways to the final showdown with Knowles. 
In the final match, Justin Knowles continued with his winning ways. Playing on a tough pair, Knowles and Sepeniak both used their bowling skills and made fine adjustments to their games to get the most out of each ball thrown. But in the end, Knowles proved too much for Sepeniak and won the match with a 214 to 187 victory and the December Men's Series title. Went to, uh, what was the Tank Blitz and went right, went 20 right when I bowled Aaron. Uh, had some hook on that pair, so I kind of thought I could throw it to the hook. Seven pins, seven times, but made them all in one. So next match, same ball. I just, I knew 190 would probably win the match, so I wasn't looking for 240 reaction. I was just looking for 190, and I found it. <laughs> but uh, luckily, my opponents didn't find 250, because that was a possibility. On the women's side, the competition was just as fierce. Stacy Timmer of Wayland was the top qualifier in the field of 36, with a four game total of 893. She earned a bye in the first round of match play, but then beat Brandy Remy of Livonia, 202 to 189. And then Tori Taylor of Redford, 39 to 36 in a two frame overtime after tying at 219. With this win, she advanced to the finals. Robin Orlikowski of Grand Rapids was the 10th and final qualifier with 776. She found her game in match play and beat Pam Wilson of Woodhaven, 224 to 151. Last month's champion, Sherry Verispay of Newport, 198 to 161. And Ashley Denard of Southfield, 208 to 168 to face off against Timmer in the final match. The final match was as exciting and close as any of the day. Both ladies struggled adjusting to the ever-changing lane conditions. The match was a close, even affair in anybody's game going into the final frames. On her second ball of the 10th frame, Orlikowski threw a great ball, but the pins were cruel and left a solid eight pin. This opened the door for Timmer to take over the match, and she did, squeaking out a 174 to 168 victory and the December Women's Series event title. Oh, it was really brutal. Yeah, I mean, when you have two good bowlers on a pair and neither one of them are striking, just like with Justin and I, it, it, it's the pair. It's not the bowlers, it's the pair. So, yeah, that, was, that pair was broke down way different from this one because this was a fresh pair, but yeah, it was tough down there. Neither her or I had a lot of strikes, that was for sure. Now to close out the day, Men's winner Justin Knowles and women's winner Stacy Timmer faced off in one more Battle of the Series match. This match was fun and exciting with both contestants and audience members both cheering and ribbing each player. Timmer emerged the victor and made sure to rub it in with a 188 to 183 final score over Knowles. When a girl can whoop on Justin Knowles like that, that's that's all right, especially when it comes down to clunch time and I can grind out those three strikes in the end for it. If you throw a good shot and you need it to win and you walk it out, you're going to lose. That's a, that's a guarantee. And I never walk out shots and I walked that one out and I lost. That was, that was pretty much it. I missed a seven pin too, but that doesn't count. Congratulations to champions Stacy Timmer and Justin Knowles. Justin must be tuning up to defend his Masters title, and it's good to see Stacy come through for her second Women's Series title. What about that Battle of the Series match? Okay, it's time to pay some bills. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages on Bowling Showcase. The Michigan State USBC provides tournament competition and recognition for men, women, and youth bowlers in Michigan. The adult championship events for this season include the Open Championship starting in January at Mary Bowl in Livonia and Westland Bowl in Westland, and the Women's Championship starting in February at Northway Lanes and Sherman Bowling Center in Muskegon. Visit michigan-state-usbc.com for entry blanks and more information on the Michigan State USBC. We've won a lot of professional tournaments. We've won a lot of tournaments worldwide. I mean, uh, we won more in the last 
10 years worldwide than any company. We, we make good bowling balls and we, and good players use our bowling balls because they can win with them. We've been promising you a peek around Thunder Bowl and we'll deliver on that promise next as I go to the green room. Come on in, Mark. Well, hi, Vicki. How are you today? So where are we today? Today we're in the green room at Thunderbolt. So the green room, what the heck does that mean? Well, the green room is where the players from the PBA hang out waiting to be interviewed or sometimes uh, just to step away from fans uh, to regroup for their bowling. And that happens in this room. So there's kind of a lot of excitement in here so all the time. So really probably just the top five for the TV show probably, right? Most of the time. Most of the mm -hmm. time, right. Hence the green room. Correct. <laughs> okay. So what other things do you have going on here? Well, before we do that, let's talk about what some of these pictures and right. some of the artifacts you've got here in the green room that the, that the, the PBA players see when they come here. So some of the things that are in the room is starting with uh, the wall right in front of us is um, it, some really great stuff from back to Ramona Lanes, which dates back to the 40s, and the Strobel family, which is uh, Joe Strobel, Tom's dad. Um, if you take a look at the photographs, there's some photographs of him uh, passing out checks. So tournament bowling for money goes back a long way. He's um, promoting the tournament and it was called the Royal Classic. And that was obviously long before Royal Lanes was here in Detroit. So um, it was a long running tournament. I understand that it ran for, for quite some time and had great attendance. There's also at that time, Governor Williams, who is uh, kicking off an event, not 100% sure what the event was. And also a really nice photograph of Mrs. Strobel, Tom's mother, bowling with her Wednesday morning uh, ladies league. So Very large nice. leagues back then. Yeah. You know, and as everybody at home knows, Thunder Bowl has been the host of the World Series of Bowling from the inaugural one in 2019 yeah. to even the one last year in 2000, or 2009, I'm sorry, and to the one in 2019. Yes. Uh, so you've got some mementos from that right behind us here from 2019. Well, right behind us here are the sweeps. And what that is, is what the uh, TV viewer or a fan would see sitting and watching everybody bowl. And those are up all week long while these guys are bowling on the uh, shots that are listed on the sweeps. And then once they win that event, they sign that sweep. They're the winner of that event, and that gets them to the TV show. So we have those that we uh, keep track of, and those are all behind me with the winners' names on them. We also have a couple of artifacts from the fall swing that was a couple of years ago and what those winners were, and some artifacts from the original World Series of Bowling, which I believe was the very first uh, World Series ever. Yes, it was. So, and, you know, Thunder Bowl is historic just because of the National Bowling League. Yep. Okay, that's where it all started yep. for Thunderbolt. But then it's transitioned here. You know, uh, Tom Strobel has, you know, embraced the PBA in the yep. last 10 years, uh, and it's been great. Um, so, but what other events do you have going on or coming up here at Thunderbolt? Well, we have some same type events that will help us with that arena history. I love the history of Thunderbolt because it shows some really great fun that happens in all of our rooms with glow bowling and cosmic bowling, but we get a really good chance to see some great competition happening um, throughout the year too. So it, that's fun. Um, coming up, one of the highlights in 2020 is going to be the NCAA finals. That'll be coming up in April. So that's, so that's the women's finals. It is. And um, the planning's been going on for the last nine or 10 months. It'll be a great event. We'll let the viewers know when we get a little closer how they can get tickets for that event. Um, it's going to happen right here in the arena. Some TV shows will happen in this room. We'll, we'll interview some players. And um, ESPN will be here, and so we'll be able to see a lot of that on TV. That's exciting. We've got, um, in March, we're going to host the state men's and the state senior masters, 
which is really exciting because I don't believe either one of those events has maybe ever been at Thunderbolt. No, they have not. Kind of hard to believe, but um, right. really excited for that to be coming our way. So that both of those are going to happen in March, and obviously um, they can check out the websites for uh, the information for that, including our website. Absolutely. So we told you we'd give you another peek around Thunderbolt. Here's another little area that nobody sees. Um, and Vicki, we appreciate you doing that this month. We appreciate all the support Thanks, of Mark. Bowling Showcase. We appreciate it. Now it's time for everybody at home to take a look at some upcoming events that you can participate in. Mayflower Lanes in Redford is the host of the MDUSBC Senior Masters on February 8th and 9th. Sponsored by Turbo Grips, this event will feature the best bowlers 50 years of age and older. Bill Kazmierski is the defending champion. The entry fee is only $120 with a first prize of $2,000 based on 120 entries. Pick up the phone and give us a call to compete against the best senior bowlers around. The annual Women's and Open Championship Tournament, commonly known as the City Tournament, kicks off February 8th at Woodhaven Bowlerama in Woodhaven. Action continues every weekend through March 9th. This low-cost handicap and scratch tournament is popular and open to all MD USBC members. Not only is it fun, it's competitive and you could win money and a title. What more can you ask for? Don't miss out on this favorite tournament. The MD USBC Women's and Men's Series season may be winding down, but there's still much competition to be had. The next event is March 8th at Sterling Lanes in Sterling Heights. Come join in the fun and competition of this long running series. Call the MDUSBC office at 248-443-2695 extension 105 for more information or visit MDUSBC.com. Remember, all our tournament information can be found at MDUSBC.com. But first it's time to sharpen your game with TurboTech driven to bowl. Welcome back to TurboTech. I'm Lori Moraz, and I'm here today with our national sales manager, Chris Sand, and we're here to tell you about an exciting new product from Turbo called the Wrist Restrictor. Pretty cool new training aid designed to reduce over rotation of the bowling ball at release or the dreaded backup ball release. Yeah, we've been testing it here in our facility for about eight months now. Uh, we've been working with a lot of high school students and it's instant feedback. They can actually use it while they're bowling, so they really enjoy that. It's really simple to use. Uh, in years past, we've always had a wrist brace that you can reduce the wrist from going back or forward, right. but never really help you with the over rotation aspect of it. So uh, simple product here. You get a glove with it. It comes in three different sizes, small, medium, medium, large, large, extra large. You also get a forearm strap that you would attach to the forearm and then this leather piece. This leather piece is the key. So what we would do is we take this leather piece, attach it to the stud, wrap it around the wrist according to what your deficiency is and okay. attach it to the forearm restraint and we kind of restrict you from doing the bad things. Chris is actually going to um, put the device on our student here today and show you how it works. We now have our student Brad and we're going to show how to put on the wrist restrictor. So Brad is a right-handed bowler, so we're going to put this glove on your right hand. It is universal. It can be used on the right and the left hand. Brad, go ahead and put that on your right hand. I'm then going to get this forearm strap ready for him to apply to his forearm. This is just going to go over the wrist as well. We apply it to the forearm just below the elbow. Secure it nice and tight. This does have Velcro on it, um, and that's the key. This is where the leather strap is going to attach to the forearm piece. So for this particular purpose, we're going to uh, try and eliminate the over rotation. So Brad, what I need you to do is I need you to turn your palm out, thumb to the outside of the elbow. Now I'm gonna take our leather strap, attach it to the stud. I'm now going to wrap it around the wrist and attach it to our forearm strap. Now, Brad, go ahead and try and rotate your hand. We can see how much he is now restricted and is now going to get the proper rotation. 
All right, so now we're gonna strap Brad in to eliminate his backup ball release. So we can still use the same glove, the same forearm piece, and the leather strap. But this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Brad's palm and we're gonna face it towards the ground. I'm now gonna take our leather piece, attach it to the stud, wrap it over the wrist, and attach it to our forearm piece now. Now you may feel a little difference when we're doing the backup release because the strap will need to go a little bit longer. So you can see I've moved it up a little bit, but we can now feel we can't exactly make that motion that causes that reverse hook or that backup. So that's it. Pretty simple product to use. Three pieces, two ways to use it. Find it at your local retailer or at turbogrips.com. Thanks Turbo for giving us those great tips. They'll continue bringing you tips and techniques each month here on Bowling Showcase so you can keep up with the latest innovations. Time for another commercial break and we'll be back with the third Women's and Men's Series event from right here at Thunder Bowl next on Bowling Showcase. Power. Precision. This trophy is not given. It must be earned. The 2020 NCAA Women's Bowling Championship. April 10th and 11th at Thunder Bowl Lanes in Detroit, Michigan. Visit NCAA.com slash tickets to get your tickets today. The Hug Pickup. The Home Run Swing. The drum major high step, the genuine joy, the unforgettable party, the food, the friends, the original social network. No matter who you are, it's always a great time. Grab your family, find a friend, and go bowling. Welcome back, and let's check out the third women's and men's series of the season from right here at Thunder Bowl. The third men's and women's series event of the season and the first of the new year was held on Sunday, January 12th, right here at Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park. Despite icy roads and bitter cold temperatures, the turnout was impressive with 50 men and 32 women bowlers sharing the lanes on this day. As with all of the men's and women's series events, winners earn money as well as cup points based on their standings. These points are accumulated throughout the five series events with a cup points winner awarded at the end of the season. On the men's side, Dan McClelland of Kitchener, Ontario was the top qualifier with a four game total of 954 including a high game of 279. In match play, he defeated David Owens of Mason, 229 to 172, and fellow Canadian Dylan Hunter of Tecumseh, Ontario, 217 to 211 to advance to the finals. Michael Snow of Windsor, Ontario, qualified third with a four game total of 911. In match play, he beat Connor Weber of Wayne, 238 to 206. Then Darren Alexander of Essex, Ontario, 210 to 193 to advance to the championship match. In the final championship match, McClellan had trouble with the lanes and shot his lowest score of the day. Snow continued to bowl consistently and pulled away from McClelland, eventually winning the match with a 210 to 172 score and the men's series event title. Well, not really. He, he had a, a couple of bad breaks. Uh, he had a, what I saw was a solid 810, if you can believe that. We'll have to go to the video replay for that one. Um, but I threw a nice four bagger in the middle and then uh, he chopped a spare and um, pretty much coasted from there. On the ladies' side of the house, Michaela Mitchell of London, Ontario, who qualified fourth with a four game total of 850, stormed through match play with impressive wins over Darlene Dysart of Southfield, 
235 to 185. And top qualifier Trisha Reed of Romulus, 212 to 160 on her way to the final match. High school student Melanie Straub of Chesterfield, competing in her very first Women's Series event, qualified seventh with 820. In match play, she was victorious over second seed Maddie Klein of Whitmore Lake, 194 to 161, and then defeated defending Women's Series Cup champion Brandi Remy of Livonia, 216 to 202, to earn her spot in the finals. Both ladies bowled well in the final. A seesaw battle ensued with both bowlers striving to take and hold the lead. Straw bowled with a confidence that belayed her years, but Mitchell proved too much and eventually won the match with a 221 to 208 victory and this month's title. Yeah, so I went in with um, a bunch of confidence, uh, not knowing that she was a high school kid, but um, just knowing that I've been here before and I just, threw every shot with confidence and, and made my spares and, and went with it. <laughs> After winning her second Women's Series event in the last two years, Michaela Mitchell moved on to beat men's champion Michael Snow 188 to 151 in the day's ending Battle of the Series match. Congratulations to Canadians Michaela Mitchell and Mike Snow on their titles. Michaela has been to the winner's circle before, but this was a first time for Mike. Look for us every Saturday at 10 a.m. on WADL Detroit with Bowling Showcase. If you happen to miss an episode, you can catch it on our Bowling Showcase channel on YouTube.com. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or email us at bowlingshowcase at gmail. We're interested in your feedback. Now the adult challenge continues next week, so don't miss it. Now it's time to say goodbye on Bowling Showcase.